I love Community. I remember watching it as it originally aired on NBC back in the day. It was my first introduction to Dan Harmon, whose work I've come to absolutely love over the last few years. And while Community obviously wasn't his first venture, I think it's where his craft was perfected. A lot of people, me included, consider Community to be one of the best sitcoms of all time. Hashtag six seasons in a movie. And the writing is, well, obviously a huge part of that. So let's do another one of these huge review slash ranking videos and just kind of relax like a fat dog, you know? So similar to what I did in previous videos where I ranked every episode of a series, let's go over what exactly I'll be doing here. I'll be going through each and every episode and giving my thoughts on them and then ranking them from best to worst by season. At the end of the video, I'll rank absolutely everything. And obviously, this is all my opinion. I'm not looking at IMDb scores or taking the score that an episode might have into account. I'm also not going to be giving each episode an individual score because I don't really like the idea of scores like that, and also I'm not very good at them. I fully expect that I'd get to the point where I'd be giving episodes one of three scores, a one, a five, or a ten, and that doesn't really get across what I want to say about each episode and could honestly take away from my final thoughts. I also won't be going into an incredible amount of detail for each episode, but there will be ones where I talk more about the plot than others. It'll be kind of dependent on the episode and what all is actually going on in it. There's just going to be episodes where I don't have a ton to say. Let's get going. Season 1 Episode 1 Pilot This is a very impressive pilot. It accomplishes an absolute ton in a short amount of time and is super funny the whole way through. One thing I do think this pilot does exceptionally well is show us fully fleshed out, well thought out characters. You can tell that Dan Harmon and the writers knew exactly who they wanted each of these characters to be right off the bat. They introduced the setting fairly well as well and hey, would you look at that? They straight up do a full ass title drop at the end of the very first episode. It's interesting looking at this episode and knowing where all the characters end up going throughout the series run, but I think that this is a fantastic start to the series and a great way to get all of these characters to the starting line. Season 1 Episode 2 Spanish 101 Okay, so we've heard a good bit about Spanish class in the previous episode, but now that the study group is officially a thing, we get to see what their class and teacher are actually like and were officially introduced to Senior Chang, played by Ken Jeong. This was coming out around the time The Hangover was released, so this was a really huge breakthrough moment for Ken Jeong. Which is actually something we can say for a lot of the actors and actresses from the show. Annie and Shirley team up to lead a protest, and we get to see how well they bounce off each other. And we also get to see Britta being something of an antagonistic force against them. We also get to see how Jeff desperately wants to manipulate everything, and how this will tend to go awry. And finally, at the end, we're blessed with the sweet rap Troy and Abed do. A great episode and follow up to the previous. I'll place it just above that in this list. Season 1, Episode 3, Introduction to Film This episode is really the first time someone in the group tries to deal with Abed. He's being forced to only take classes that'll help his father's falafel business, and Britta decides to put forward the money for him to take a film class. As we'll see time and time again as the series continues, Abed kind of takes this in his own direction, eventually driving Britta insane as she gets into a fight with his father. But I will say that the ending of this episode is beautiful. With Abed really opening up to his father and finally connecting with him for the first time in probably their entire lives. I think this is something that Community does really well. They spend the whole episode kind of joking around before hitting you with an emotional bombshell that ties everything together. And this episode is a fantastic way to show that formula. Better than the pilot, but below Spanish 101. Season 1, Episode 4, Social Psychology These first few episodes are really taking advantage of their large main cast by just kind of pairing different groups of people up to see how they play off each other. And that makes all of these first episodes seem really fresh. It's rare that you get a show with a cast like this, where it seems like any pairing of characters you end up with works this well. This go around we see Ani and Abed sort of playing off each other, as well as Shirley and Jeff bonding over making fun of Vaughn's tiny nipples. Which, holy hell yeah, they are really tiny. An alright episode, probably the weakest of the bunch so far. 
though I do like the Duncan principle being accidentally proven by Duncan and his research crew breaking instead of Abed. Season 1, Episode 5, Advanced Criminal Law This is like the first major Dean episode, which is weird considering how much of a fixture he really is. But I get that it's probably more important to introduce the other main characters as well as set up their individual dynamics, how the show will be going forward, and the university at large. I'm kind of split on Troy and Abed this episode. They feel pretty different than they do for the vast, vast majority of the series, but I guess that's to be expected for newly introduced characters this early into the series. The weird poolside court session is pretty fun. A pretty good episode overall. Do we ever see this pool again? Season 1, Episode 6, Football, Feminism, and You This is a very important Troy episode. He was a fantastic quarterback in high school, and now, since he's at Greendale only because he was injured and lost his scholarship, he's being hounded into joining the football team and has to wrestle with changing or reverting back to who he was in high school. But what's nice is, at the end of the episode, we learn that Troy faked his injury. He liked football, but he didn't like the pressure, and playing with Greendale means that there's basically no pressure at all. He can simply play for the love of the sport and be the person he's becoming. And this is like the last we ever hear of a Greendale football team. We're also introduced to the Greendale mascot, the Greendale human being, which is pure nightmare fuel and awakens some kind of primal fear within me. An alright episode, if not a bit forgettable in the grand scheme of things. Season 1, Episode 7, Introduction to Statistics This is the first time we get an episode that really focuses in on Pierce. He's been in every episode so far, but now he's taking center stage. He's dealing with, well, feeling old and out of touch, something that will become a bit of a staple for his character. He ends up getting some pills from Starburns and ends up tripping pretty hard. Jeff, who's been flirting with the teacher at Greendale, ends up actually putting that off to save Pierce and talk him down after he built a desk fort in a drug-fueled rampage. Although Abed, or I guess I should say Batman, actually saves both of them as the desk fort collapses. It's a good episode that shows just how much Jeff actually does care for the group and that he is changing, albeit fairly slowly. I really like this episode. It's the series' first Halloween episode, and I think that everything they do in it works fairly well. Easily the best episode of the season so far. Season 1, Episode 8, Home Economics This episode pushes forward something that we'll be seeing a good bit of for, well, a solid portion of the season. It really kicks off the whole, Annie has a crush on Troy, but he doesn't notice thing. And honestly, it's probably not my favorite running subplot. I don't think it's bad or anything, it's just kind of drawn out a little too much for my tastes. I get that that's how it goes a lot of the time with innocent crushes like this though. Someone just kind of watching from afar. Though I do like at the end that Annie does stand up for herself, at least a little. Meanwhile Jeff is currently homeless and moves in with Abed before basically falling apart. And Bond's back and in a band with Pierce. The wordplay in the first song that the band does being undercut by the fact that it was probably accidental wordplay as shown by the second song, where Vaughn just calls Pierce a B, is hilariously well done. Another pretty good episode. Not nearly as good as the previous, but still above Spanish 101 in my mind. Season 1, Episode 9, Debate 109 So while the previous episode dealt with the Annie and Troy ship, this one looks more at if Jeff and Annie would be a good match. And that's, honestly, kind of creepy. Especially when later down the line we learn Jeff's actual age. If he turns 40 in Season 5, then at this point he's around 35. Annie's like 18. Kind of creepy, all things considered. Anyways, I do like in this episode that Jeff's debating skills are shown and torn down. We see that, yes, he's incredibly charismatic, but there's sometimes much more to debating than talking circles around someone. Somewhere along the way you need to make some kind of point. The Abed subplot where he's so in tune with what everyone would want to do that he's accidentally predicting the future is pretty fun, but overall it's a pretty down the middle episode in my opinion. Season 1 Episode 10 Environmental Science 
In this episode, Chang goes a little overboard with his, well, everything. He's assigning a huge 20 page paper that's due the upcoming Monday. A ridiculous ask for a Spanish 101 class. What could they possibly write about for 20 pages? Jeff ends up kind of bonding with Chang and finding out that Chang's kind of on the edge because he's having marital problems. Meanwhile, Troy and Abed are doing a project where they're training a rat to respond to their singing when it escapes. What I think really makes this episode special is the culmination of everything into this huge musical number at the end of the episode. Everything ties together pretty beautifully, and their rendition of Somewhere Out There might be better than the original in my mind. A good episode with a great ending. Above home economics, but below introduction to statistics. Season 1, Episode 11, The Politics of Human Sexuality I'm kind of torn on this episode. There are parts that I really like and parts that I don't. We get to see more growth from Jeff, but it feels almost tacked on to the end of the episode. With him just changing Britta's name in his phone. I like the overarching theme of Jeff becoming a better person because of his experiences at Greendale, but it almost feels like there's speed running through it at points. I don't know. I like both Troy and Abed's competitions and Annie's innocent plot lines more. This is a bold take, I'm sure. But Troy and Abed have such a natural chemistry that any point of the episode where they're together is almost certain to be the best part. And Annie is quickly building a smaller chemistry with just about every other character. The ending portion where they find out that all the condoms have holes in them and Abed is on the PA speaker telling people to have sex without condoms never fails to make me laugh. Though this is kind of a middling episode, I'll put it above the pilot. Season 1, Episode 12, Comparative Religion Here's this season's Christmas episode, the first of the lot. And since the study group is such a diverse group, it's no surprise that they would have a wide range of different religious beliefs. Jeff stands up to some bullies who are hassling Abed, which is nice, but he decides not to fight them because of Shirley's influence. I also like that, after Shirley shows up and sees what Jeff is dealing with, because she didn't want him to fight, she tells Jeff to just kick his ass. She tells Jeff to just kick his ass before the whole study group jumps into the fray. It's nice seeing this family come together to protect each other. And it shows just how much they all actually do mean to each other. Being willing to put their own beliefs on the back burner for at least a little, for the betterment and aid of each other. It's really sweet. Season 1, Episode 13, Investigative Journalism this episode has one of the biggest introductory swerves I can think of. All of a sudden, there's an eighth character in the study group, one played by Jack Black of all people. He has, apparently, been in the background watching all of the group shenanigans over the last semester, and has decided that he wants to be part of the study group. The joke at the beginning of him throwing off the show's rhythm as the joke is cut off by the show's intro playing is one of the best jokes I think I've seen in the show. It's so stupidly good. I also like the follow-up to the Dean's weird Dalmatian fetish that was set up a few episodes earlier. Something that'll be a bit of a weird background joke. Another pretty good episode, not the best or anything, but still a fun time. Between Debate 109 and Advanced Criminal Law. Season 1, Episode 14, Interpretive Dance. This episode kind of pairs up Troy and Britta for the first time. They're both taking interpretive dance and have a performance coming up. But there are a couple of issues arising. First is that Jeff's relationship with the professor he was courting earlier has been made public. Ish. Britta is super jealous of this and that kind of throws her off, especially during the actual performance, where she just kind of doesn't finish the dance. Troy doesn't want to be made fun of for doing dance and tries to skip the performance entirely. He does end up saving Britta who's floundering though, which is a nice touch. It's probably the weakest episode of the season so far. It's just kind of all around forgettable, in that I routinely forget about it. Bottom of the list so far, but by no means a bad episode. Season 1, Episode 15, Romantic Expressionism It's another Vaughn episode. I honestly kind of forgot how often he pops up this season. It kind of feels like they used all the jokes possible for his general character archetype and then decided they were done with him. Which might have been for the best. Though it could have been interesting to see his character return way down the line to see how he's grown. 
Either way, Annie is now interested in Vaughn and his tiny nipples. Surely Pierce, Troy, Ovid, and Chang are all watching and making fun of Kick Puncher, but Pierce ends up hiring a comedy troupe to write jokes for him and takes the whole thing a bit too far, as per usual. Jeff and Britta spend a good bit of the episode trying to keep Annie and Vaughn apart for their own selfish reasons, but end up deciding to let her make her own mistakes and date who she wants, in this case that being tiny nippled Vaughn. I know it seems like I'm spending a lot of time on that, but like, look at those things. Anyways, a fun episode above home economics. Season 1, Episode 16, Communication Studies Britta left Jeff a drunken voicemail with some serious BCI, so Jeff needs to leave her a similar voicemail in order to even things out between them. But when Abed sees Jeff's terrible acting, Jeff and Abed get hammered together and leave an embarrassing voicemail. It's fun seeing the interactions between Jeff and Abed and how far their friendship has actually come so far, and hungover Abed is pretty hilarious as well. Being basically unable to actually make his usual references is pretty funny. But aside from that, this is one of my least favorite episodes of the season. I never fully got behind the will they won't they of Jeff and Britta, and I'm not really sure why. Maybe they're both too pessimistic about it and need a bright light to lighten up their lives. Maybe they just don't like them together. Who knows? Anyways, just above interpretive dance. Season 1, Episode 17, Physical Education this episode is another one that sits in something of a weird place for me. On one hand, the idea and concept behind the actual episode is pretty funny. On the other side of things, I'm subjected to seeing Blake Clark in his tidy whities Though I think I actually prefer the Abed plotline overall. Him being kind of forced into a box of what other people think he should be before demonstrating at the end that he's better off just being himself, and that apparently brings ladies flocking to him. There's really just not a ton to say about this one. It's a pretty standard episode, maybe a bit above the average that we've seen so far. Season 1, Episode 18, Basic Genealogy This, so far, is currently my least favorite episode. There's a lot of potential here. The Pierce's daughter plotline probably had the most going for it, but it kind of squanders any momentum it had, I think. On the opposite end, I think the Abed and Shirley plot had the exact opposite problem, where it felt like it wasn't going anywhere and it had a strangely nice resolution. And then there's the Troy and Britta storyline. I can't stand this plotline. I'd honestly rather just forget that it exists at all. Worst episode of the season. Season 1, Episode 19, Beginner Pottery Okay, so this episode introduces us to Jeff's great nemesis a successful doctor who seems like he's just about everything that Jeff's not. He's seemingly nice, he's just as handsome, he hasn't been disgraced in his career, and, most importantly, he's good at pottery. Suspiciously good for a beginner's pottery class. And Jeff sort of goes crazy trying to prove that he's only taking the class to perv on girls or something. Jeff ends up getting kicked out of the class after accidentally reenacting Ghost, I really like this plotline, but I think the other plotline where the rest of the study group is all taking a sailing class in the parking lot is really where this episode excels. Pierce being left for dead by Shirley is hilarious, as is when he paddles back up triumphantly. A fantastic episode. Second best of the season so far. Season 1, Episode 20, The Science of Delusion This is probably the weirdest episode we've had so far. Britta had a strange frog sombrero prank plan but ends up dropping a human corpse out of a window instead. Pierce's strange religion is taken advantage of and he ends up dressing like the Cookie Crisp wizard. Which is not even a reference I get because the Cookie Crisp mascot wasn't a wizard when I was a kid. It was a burglar. <laughs> and Annie and Shirley are bad cop bad copping their way around campus while being egged on by Abbott who's just kind of bored. Yeah, a lot of off the wall stuff. Something that we'll see more of as the series continues but this is the first big dip into that pool. A fun episode, but nothing too brain wrinkling. Season 1, Episode 21, Contemporary American Poultry This is one of those episodes that I think of as a classic community episode. There are quite a few like this, but this is probably the first we've come across so far. It's amazing from start to finish, sets up a bunch of stuff that we'll be seeing for seasons to come, and is genuinely hilarious throughout. 
Abed casually taking control of the group and then the entire school through his mafia chicken fingered business is the most community thing I think I've written so far. And the reveal that Abed was doing all of this just to try and get closer to everyone is just the cherry on top. Not to mention the continued growing friendship of Jeff and Abed. A fantastic episode, best of the season so far. Season 1, Episode 22, The Art of Discourse Pierce has messed up. He's pants Shirley and has been kicked out of the study group, which is a fair reaction to sexual assault. I'm not really the biggest fan of this episode. It's kind of a pretty meh experience mixed in with some much better episodes. So while it's not bad by any stretch of the imagination, it's forgettable because it's just kind of sandwiched in a rough spot for any episode to be. Above Investigative Journalism Season 1, Episode 23, Modern Warfare If you were to ask someone what their favorite episodes of Community were, there's a very good chance that they would say the paintball episodes. This is the first of them. And yeah, it absolutely lives up to that hype. It's so fun and ridiculous, which is where Community is always at its best. All of the characters are taken out until it's just Jeff and Britta, and the two, well, they do the horizontal monster mash. Honestly, my favorite part of the episode, aside from all the over-the-top action, is the end. Jeff wins priority registration. He can take whatever class he wants at whatever time he wants. But he instead gives it to Shirley allowing her to make a schedule that allows her to spend more time with her children. An act that, at the beginning of the season, probably would have been unthinkable for Jeff. It goes to show just how much his character has actually grown throughout the show's run so far. We're nearing the end of season 1 and it's little things like this that really give us a good sense of progression. Best of the season for sure. Season 1, Episode 24, English as a Second Language it's hard to follow an episode like Modern Warfare, but this one is a pretty good effort. This episode sets up a lot of things for the future. For starters, Chang's slow downfall. It turns out that he's been lying about having a degree and asks Jeff for help. He is, of course, found out, and with Chang now replaced, there's now a new final the group has to pass. Though, because of their studying, they all do. We also see Troy's innate talent as a handyman, something we don't really see paid off for several seasons. It's a fun episode and it really sets the next season up as the group agrees to all take anthropology together. Season 1, Episode 25, Pascal's Triangle Revisited Strangely, I would have thought that the previous episode would have been the season finale. It had a pretty good sense of finality in my mind. They all passed their class or at least felt confident, Chang's storyline had a good swerve in renewal, and the group all decided on what class they wanted to take next year. This one kind of just feels tacked on. Troy ends up moving in with Pierce, which will come up a bit in the next season. Britta admits feelings for Jeff, who then ignores both her and the professor, and ends up kissing Annie, which is still kind of gross when you consider their ages. It's an okay episode, but the few plot lines that are explored and set up don't feel like they necessitate an entire episode for them. I get that they had a season order and had another episode to fill, but it doesn't feel like their strongest work to me. Above Physical Education Season 1 Review So, a couple notes right off the bat. First, it's kind of strange reviewing a series where the first season got a full 25 episodes like this. With every other series I've covered so far, it's been a short first season to see how the show does and for the show to find its footing. But it really speaks for how much confidence they had in the show, in Harmon's vision, that they went with this many episodes. And it shows just how well conceptualized the characters in universe were. There are a few changes here and there, but the characters don't feel like they drastically change who they are at any point. This season is solid, and it feels like by the end they were hitting a good tear of episodes. They were nailing what they wanted to do, and I'm excited to see if they can keep that going through Season 2. Season 2, Episode 1, Anthropology 101 It's a new year at Greendale. Britta is still embarrassed by her incredibly public confession to Jeff last season. Annie is expecting something more from her and Jeff after they kissed. Chang wants to join the study group. And Betty White is apparently teaching Anthropology 101. There's a lot that this episode needs to try and cover. It does a fairly good job of getting everything going and covers quite a bit of ground. 
but because it's so bogged down by the finale of the last season, it doesn't allow it to be the strongest episode that we've seen so far, but it's by no means a bad episode. We still really haven't gotten into those episodes yet. For the time being, I'll place this between the art of discourse and investigative journalism. And we get to see Betty White rap. R.I.P. Season 2, Episode 2, Accounting for Lawyers. This episode is a test for Jeff Winger. It's really here to show us just how far Jeff has really come in the last year. It puts him back in the crosshairs of one of his former lawyer colleagues, and Jeff routinely ends up taking the high road throughout the episode, and even ends up not confronting the man who turned him into the bar. The Troy, Annie, and Abed subplot is pretty fun, and Abed's idea to act like they all got chloroformed after Annie panic chloroformed a security guard is hilarious, as is when it doesn't work. On the other end of things, Chang is desperately dancing in Pop and Locktoberfest, a dance marathon, for a chance to join the study group. He dances for hours before any of the rest of the study group shows up, and they almost immediately lose the competition for Chang. It's fairly funny. A pretty good episode, definitely better than the last. Above English as a second language. Season 2, Episode 3, The Psychology of Letting Go. Pierce is old. That's like 90% of what his character is used for. So finding out that his mother has just died is something of a shock. At least it was to me. Yeah, we heard from her early in the series, but still. That woman had to have been ancient. With this episode, we get a bit more insight into the strange religion that Pierce is following. It's something of a mixture of science fiction and a few more orthodox traditions. When Pierce gets the Energon pod that his mother is in, he's in denial that she's actually gone. Just that she's waiting for technology to reach the point where she can be brought back. Jeff decides that he's going to make Pierce realize how ridiculous that is after he finds out that his cholesterol is a little high. But then they find a homemade CD from Pierce's mother talking about life and death. It helps Jeff realize that Pierce's religion is helping him cope with his mother's death. It's a nice moment. The Annie and Britta subplot is fairly forgettable. In the Abed C plot in the background where he befriends a pregnant woman and helps deliver a baby is hilarious once you realize it's there. A fairly solid episode overall, right above introduction to film. Season 2, Episode 4, Basic Rocket Science. I'm not entirely sure why, but I could have swore that this episode was much later. Maybe it's because I kind of forgot just how long the first few seasons were. If this were always sunny, it'd be like late season 3. Anyways, this is a dumb and fun episode. It's not the best or anything, but it definitely has its moments. The idea of a weird KFC space simulator is pretty funny, and I love Abed, who despite wanting more than anyone else to be on board the ship, ends up finding the most joy by doing a bunch of space movie homages. Overall, I think this is a very good episode, but I think that somehow there feels like there could have been more done with this premise. It's so stupidly good that it's almost impossible to really live up to it. Anyways, best of the season, I'll put this above comparative religion. Season 2, Episode 5, Messianic Myths and Ancient Peoples. I think this is a weird episode, even by community standards. Abed is hired by Shirley to make a Christian viral video. Abed, despite being a Muslim, agrees to do so. It devolves into this weird self-indulgent mess where he kind of assumes the position both in and out of the film as Jesus. I really like how against everything Shirley is, but at the end, when she sees Abed genuinely praying in yet another reenactment of a Bible story, Jesus' prayer in the garden, after he comes to the conclusion that his film is crap, she has a realization. She decides to save Abed by continuing down her destructive path and literally destroying the film saving him the embarrassment that this crap film would have brought. It would have ruined his film career before it ever had the chance to begin. A really nice moment that brings the two of them together. But the thing is, overall, I'm kind of torn on this episode. While there's the nice moment at the end, I don't find it to be super enjoyable throughout the rest of its runtime. I'll place this at the bottom of the season so far, right below Social Psychology. Season 2, Episode 6, Epidemiology. Here is this season's Halloween episode, and they really knocked it out of the park again. Honestly, I think this episode is even better than the previous seasons. There are a few reasons why. First, since this episode is a good bit later in the series, we know not just the main characters better, but many of the side characters as well. This allows some side characters to shine a bit more, characters like Chang and Rich specifically. 
Second is because I think both the through line and the homages they go through are much more cohesive. This focuses on Troy and Abed's friendship through a zombie-like outbreak. It's a fun episode with a pretty positive message about being yourself and the power of friendship and whatnot. The Shirley and Chang thing is a bit weird, but that's mainly here to set stuff up down the line, as everyone has their memories wiped at the end of the episode. Just being told they were all collectively drugged. An absolute banger of an episode. Top of the list so far. Season 2, Episode 7, Aerodynamics of Gender. This is an episode that's looking at the gender roles within the study group. Troy and Jeff are competing with each other and talking about butts, and the women are taking a class to empower themselves and gossiping with Abed. Through the power of the magical trampoline that they find, the guys are able to find a sense of inner peace and no longer feel the need to compete. On the other end of things, when the ladies find out that Abed is going a bit overboard, they're turned on and find out that gossiping and ripping on people to their faces is wrong. It's an okay episode. Neither of the plots really grab me throughout the whole thing, but the twist at the end of the episode that the guy who was taken care of and hiding the trampoline was super racist the whole time, but Jeff and Troy not seeing it because they were too enamored with the trampoline is pretty funny. A mid-tier episode, maybe slightly above that, right above English as a second language. Season 2, Episode 8, Cooperative Calligraphy. Uh-oh, here it is, a bottle episode. This is an episode where the gang is trying to figure out who stole Annie's pen, and to do so, they've locked themselves in the study room until they can get to the bottom of it. Bottle episodes are really hard to pull off. You need rock-solid character writing and super strong characters that can hold a story entirely on their own. And those are two things that we know for a fact the community has. And both of those aspects come together in a gloriously fun and dumb and hilarious episode. The characters are all completely on point, and we actually learn a lot about them as they're broken down by each other. And the reveal that it was actually Annie's boobs, the monkey who's been hiding in the vents the entire time, is something both out of left field and perfectly in line with what we should expect from the show. An episode like this is something that only the best kind of shows can pull off. It's probably up there for one of the best bottle episodes, period. Top of the list. Season 2, Episode 9, Conspiracy Theories and Interior Design. This time, Community is doing a conspiracy theory episode. Uh-oh, are birds real? Does Greendale offer night classes? Who is Pepe Silvia? Only one of those questions is answered this time around. And the answer is, kind of? Jeff has made up a class, for some reason. He's turned over a new leaf, but apparently he's still fine defrauding and lying his way through college. But his lie ends up being proven correct when a professor he made up, Professor Professorson, actually shows up. There's a whole thing that devolves into the Dean, Jeff, and Andy all taking turns betraying each other to teach each other a lesson, which is pretty funny and slightly confusing to keep track of at times. Seeing the Dean absolutely freaking out at the end of the episode because he isn't really sure what's happening anymore is definitely the highlight of the episode for me. A good episode that kind of suffers because it's surrounded by great episodes. Right below Romantic Expressionism. Season 2, Episode 10, Mixology Certification. This isn't my favorite episode, but I think that, for the series at large, it's an incredibly important one. At least that's how I've always viewed it. This is the episode where Troy realizes that he's an adult. You see, Troy was 10 for two years because fifth grade is really hard for everyone. Yeah, so when the group realizes Troy is now 21, they all decide to take him out to a bar. He lets his friends hijack his birthday, he ends up turning down his only drink of the night to responsibly take care of his friends and drive safely, he builds up Annie after she had a bad night, and he actually scolds Abed slightly for tattling. This is an episode that makes Troy take a step back from the adults of the group and realize they aren't nearly as put together and cool as he thought. This is something that I, and I think a lot of people, can empathize with. You don't wake up one day and have yourself together. A lot of people really have no idea what they're doing. And I have a lot of respect for this episode for authentically showing this. I'll place this just below contemporary American poultry. Season 2, Episode 11, Abed's Uncontrollable Christmas. This is the first time that the series actively changes its medium. Instead of the typical live-action sitcom, we're immediately greeted by a stop-motion, Rankin-Bass-style animation. A nice touch to this season's Christmas episode. And it actually does have a reason. 
You see, Abed is having something of a psychological break and is, for some reason, actually seeing everything as stop motion. So the study group, along with Duncan, who's really bad at his job throughout this episode by the way, set out to try and figure out why exactly this is happening. There are a lot of words I can use to describe this episode, but ambitious is the one that I find myself coming back to time and time again. This isn't an episode where they set out to save Christmas or find the reason for the season or anything like that. Instead, it sets out to discuss how deeply personal the holidays can be to some people, how much it can hurt when a longtime tradition like Abed seeing his mother can abruptly end. This episode has absolutely everything in it that makes community great. It's hilarious, it's absurd, but it's grounded in reality. Another fantastic episode. I'm putting this at the top of the list for the time being. Season 2, Episode 12, Asian Population Studies After an episode like the previous, anything is going to be a step down. And despite this not being a bad episode, those come in like a season and a half, it is definitely a step down. It's the next semester, and the group is vying for a few different people who could possibly join as the study group's new 8th member. It's essentially a toss-up between Chang, Rich, who Annie's now dating, and Shirley's ex-husband, with whom she's been reconnecting. It's a pretty forgettable episode overall. The reveal of Jeff giving his impassioned speech to Rich of all people is pretty funny, but there just isn't a ton to say about it. Season 2, Episode 13, Celebrity Pharmacology 212 I don't really like this episode too much. Pierce is basically unredeemable throughout. After he finds out that Annie is having some money issues and living in a sketchy apartment, he offers to give her some money to help her out. Which is, on the surface, an incredibly nice thing to do. They even keep the whole thing a secret. But it turns out that Pierce is using the money to essentially blackmail his way into getting more lines and jokes that he wants specifically in the anti-drug play that Annie is putting on. He ends up basically making kids think that drugs are cool. Anyways, this episode just kinda lets Pierce get away with generally being terrible. Annie grows up a bit and the episode just sort of ends. We'll place this below the pilot. Season 2, Episode 14, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Uh-oh, removed episode. I absolutely love Dungeons and Dragons. I'm in a couple campaigns and play as regularly as I can. Much like D&D, this episode is just kind of plain fun. It's a good representation of everything that makes D&D, D&D. Pierce is in the villain role again this episode, with the rest of the study group and Fat Neil, who's like officially introduced in this episode, face off against him. He's a real and imaginary villain this go around. I think this episode takes advantage of its format pretty well, and all of the characters have their moments to shine. The bit where they just kind of narrate over Annie talking about sexual things is pretty funny. I think it's definitely a shame that this episode has been removed, because this episode is one of the best of the bunch. This has now taken the second place spot overall for the time. Season 2, Episode 15, Early 21st Century Romanticism This is an alright episode, with the worst part of it being Andy Dick making a cameo as a drug-induced hallucination of Pierce, which is honestly pretty apt. Troy and Abed both competing to see which of them can get the librarian to be their valentine is fairly funny, and it's super heartwarming that Troy breaks up with her and goes to hang out with Abed when he learns that he was picked because she thought Abed was weird. That's a lot of growth we've seen from Troy this season. As recently as this season's Halloween episode, we saw him ditching his plans with Abed to try and talk to some girls. The Britta plotline is pretty meh, and I do like the part where we see Jeff kind of upset that no one from the study group had any major problems and called him. He decides to kind of accept where he is for the first time, as a student at Greendale. A big moment for him. A pretty good episode right above comparative religion. Season 2, Episode 16, Intermediate Documentary Filmmaking This is the first episode that, while I was doing my rewatch of the series, my wife made me pause and go back and rewatch part of it, because she was laughing that hard. That part specifically being the couple of parts where Troy is forced to meet LeVar Burton, which to be fair are probably the highlights of the episode. Pierce is dying, and he has stuff he wants to give to everyone, mainly as a way to mess with them. Of course he isn't dying and is only doing this because no one is taking him serious or anything, which is probably just because he's been abusing painkillers and bullying everyone. It's the culmination of several of the past episodes and gives us a lot to look forward to, Will Jeff meet his dad? Will Troy ever get to stare at LeVar Burton again? 
We'll have to wait and find out. Also, the bit where we find out that Pierce was actually just giving Annie a tiara because she's his favorite is pretty sweet. A good episode right above Mixology certification. Season 2, Episode 17, Intro to Political Science. Then Vice President Joe Biden is set to come to Greendale. But Greendale had to abolish their student government and now they have to hold an election to have a student council president elected who can then meet the then vice president. The episode really wants to mess around with the will they won't they relationship that Jeff and Annie have been becoming. And while they kind of push towards that through this episode, they end up not really doing too much with it. We also find out in this episode that apparently magnitude is only 16. What? This episode isn't the funniest, and it kind of felt bogged down in a couple spots. Definitely not my favorite. Season 2, Episode 18, Custody Law and Eastern European Diplomacy. Of all of the episodes I've talked about, this one feels more like a, yeah, you can just skip this one. It's not good, it's not bad, it's just sort of forgettable. The Chang might be the father of Shirley's baby subplot is probably my least favorite in the entire series. And it's not like I don't like any of the characters involved in the subplot, it just never really grabbed me. And Troy and Abed being friends with a war criminal who Britta sleeps with is also a strange one. Of all people, wouldn't Abed have picked up on something there? I don't know. Towards the bottom of the list. Season 2, Episode 19, Critical Film Studies. I really like this episode, even if, for the most part, it's a bit slower than many of the episodes I typically like. The main plotline has Jeff and Abed sitting around having a dinner conversation. Basically just my dinner with Andre. But Abed is faking his newly found growth that happened because he pooped his pants on the set of Cougar Town and takes advantage of the fact that Jeff believes him to do a my dinner with Andre thing. Which, to be fair, he did poop his pants on the set of Cougar Town. If you watch Cougar Town you can actually see Abed in the background of this scene. Just kind of sitting there and watching before abruptly running away. It had to have been like the most confusing thing ever for Cougar Town fans who didn't watch Community. That fact alone, a joke that spans TV series, makes this episode absolutely fantastic in my mind. But the B-plot where everyone is just sort of waiting for Jeff and Abed to show up to Abed's surprise birthday party kind of brings the whole thing down a bit in my mind. Though I do love seeing how far Jeff has actually gone to try and throw Abed a party. It's actually pretty sweet. A pretty good episode weighed down by the B-plot above Mixology certification. Season 2, Episode 20, Competitive Wine Tasting. There's been an absolutely bonkers amount of amazing episodes this season. This isn't one of them. It doesn't really do anything exceptionally well, and honestly, I think it's just trying to do too much. None of the plots feel like they connect or intersect in any meaningful way, and I find it difficult to find any kind of cohesive throughline or greater meaning to this one. Forgettable. Season 2, Episode 21, Paradigms of Human Memory. So this is the series' take on clip show episodes. Kind of. It's very meta. Which is about what you'd expect from a show like this. After Troy finds Annie's boobs in their stash in the vent, the group remembers a few good times they've had. Times we haven't seen. Like that time they went to an old west town, or that time they filled in for the glee club after they all died in that bus crash. It's a lot of cutaway jokes to adventures we haven't seen, and some meta jokes about how cutting stuff together with the right music can make things seem different. Also the bit where they cut to a flashback within a flashback and things start getting weird and Troy starts screaming is funnier than it has any right to be. There's kind of this underlying plot that the study group might break up because of some problems they're having throughout the episode, but this is season 2 and there's still 4 more seasons to go, so like, obviously that's not going to happen. Regardless, despite my usual disdain of clip show episodes, this series has a fantastic take on them. Below Intermediate Documentary Filmmaking. Season 2, Episode 22, Applied Anthropology and Culinary Arts. So Shirley has been pregnant all season, with what may be Chang's baby. And now during what's supposed to be their anthropology final, which is really just a bunch of nothing, Shirley goes into labor. And because of a riot outside of the college, she's now forced to give birth while stuck in class. This is an episode that really does a lot for Chang, but I feel that, overall, it's far from the strongest episode we've seen in the show's run. I do like the callback to Abed's background adventure and how he knows how to assist someone in giving birth, but the Troy and Abed handshake subplot is probably one of the weaker ones I can remember at this point in the show. It really felt like it served no greater purpose than getting Troy and Pierce involved in the episode when they otherwise wouldn't have been. 
who knows, placing this above political science. Season 2, Episode 23, A Fistful of Paintballs. It's time for some more paintball episodes. This time we're split across two separate episodes that are going to close out the season. I'll be talking about them separately because that's how they were originally aired, a week apart, but I'll be placing them basically side by side. This is another one of those episodes that I think kind of transcends the series as a whole. It's absolutely amazing. It's fantastic, hilarious, and a great setup for what's to come. They took everything that worked with Modern Warfare the previous season and ramped it up to 11. The stakes are higher, the characters' motivations are more complex and intertwined, and the humor, as always, is on point. A great way to get into the next episode. Season 2, Episode 24, for a few paintballs more. Now, on to the conclusion. It turns out that it was City College who was behind the scenes orchestrating everything with the paintball tournament. What I do like about this is that using his cunning and planning ahead, Pierce actually wins the whole thing. And while anyone else would have likely taken the money, Pierce doesn't need it. He's able to donate the whole thing back to Greendale and get the school back up to, well, where it was. And what's interesting is at the end of the episode, Pierce actually ends up leaving the study group. A nice change of pace. They couldn't just smooth things over, and with the growing that everyone's done, it's interesting to think where things could go. Another absolute classic of an episode in a fantastic way to send the season out. Season 2 Review So, while Season 1 was good, Season 2 was great. They're still pushing the limits on what they're able to do and get away with with different ways of telling stories. Some of their most absurdist plot ideas end up having the most human interactions within them. That's the beauty of the show. No matter how insane it gets, and it gets insane, the humanity of it all still manages to shine through. While they were still getting their feet under themselves in the first season, by season 2 they have what they want to do down. An absolutely fantastic season of television. Let's see if they can keep it up with season 3. Season 3, Episode 1, Biology 101 Community comes back with a bang for Season 3, at least within the opening song, which I've listened to like 20 times. It's a hilarious reaction to the notes that Harmon was receiving about making the show, well, less weird. Which is a strange note because that's when the show is at its best. Anyways, the rest of the episode is just okay. Pierce, despite saying he's done with the group last season, is back and rejoining. There's a new biology professor who's acting as something of a straight man now that everyone at Greendale is basically insane. He's okay, seeing a rational person bounce off everything that's happening is a pretty good idea to add some freshness to the series. An okay start to the season, above accounting for lawyers. Season 3, Episode 2, Geography of Global Conflict this episode has Annie facing off against a new nemesis, Annie Kim. Another Annie who's stolen our Annie's idea to start a Model UN at Greendale. The idea of a Model UN off is a pretty funny episode premise, and it's equally hilarious how into the idea of a parallel Earth Abed is and how that fact ends up winning them the face off. The idea of them being too meta for their Model UN is funny, but this episode just didn't grab me as many of the previous episodes have. Again, it's not bad or anything, just a pretty by-the-book episode. I'll place this above Anthropology 101 for the time being. Season 3, Episode 3, Remedial Chaos Theory So while the first couple of episodes are just kind of okay, this one blows almost everything else out of the water. Like, holy hell, this episode is absolutely fantastic. It's pretty much everything you could want out of a community episode. It's kind of a bottle episode, it's just our characters doing essentially the same scene, but with slightly different characters being present each time as we jump through different timelines. It's a brilliant study in how all of the characters influence and play off each other. Not to mention, it's hilarious and fun and gives us this great meme. Easily the best of the season, going at the very top of the list for everything at the time. Season 3, Episode 4, Competitive Ecology I don't envy any episode that needs to follow the genius that was Remedial Chaos Theory. And while this episode certainly tries its best, there's definitely a noticeable dip in quality between the two. 
but good luck putting almost any episode after the previous. This episode has all of the study group members infighting about who gets to partner with whom, or who has to partner with whom. Plus, this episode introduces us to Todd, a character who is certainly there. And to make everything a little worse, a turtle gets lit on fire. A pretty rough episode, honestly, right below communication studies. Season 3, Episode 5, Horror Fiction and Seven Spooky Steps. Here is this season's Halloween episode, and yeah, this one's another banger. I've actually talked about this episode in a good bit more detail on the channel already, so I'll keep this brief. This episode features all of the characters taking turn telling horror stories. It's pretty fun seeing all of the characters' personalities shining through their stories as they parody different horror genres. A very good episode, above cooperative calligraphy for now. Season 3, Episode 6, Advanced Gay This is another one of those episodes that's always stuck in a weird spot for me. Despite what could honestly have been a pretty one-note episode for Pierce, this episode actually has him in more of an understanding and sympathetic role than we're used to seeing him in. So, Pierce's father is, well, the worst person. He's generally terrible, and seeing Pierce kind of rebel against him at the ripe young age of… old is pretty fun to see, but we don't really know much of their relationship or enough about Pierce's father outside of everything to help give us more context even if he's just supposed to be a typical villain character, right below comparative religion. Season 3, Episode 7, Studies in Modern Movement Annie is moving in with Troy and Abed, and this episode is focused on how exactly this new living situation will work out. Annie has incorrectly assumed that she's going to get a bedroom, but Troy and Abed are a couple of man-children and have the idea in their heads that she'll be fine not doing that and instead sleeping out in the living room in a blanket for it. So obviously there's some growing and some compromises made. That's all well and good and whatever, but the standout of the episode is undoubtedly the Dean blackmailing Jeff into doing a duet to Kiss from a Rose. That alone makes this episode a good bit more competitive, but it's still not a fantastic episode. Season 3, Episode 8, Documentary Filmmaking, Redux one concept that the series really, really likes to mess with is having one of the characters, typically Abed, filming the happenings of Greendale. This isn't the first time they've done this, and it certainly won't be the last. Anyways, I really like this episode. They're making a new commercial for Greendale, and the Dean is going absolutely bonkers. This is a bit on the stranger side because it really puts the Dean into the driver's seat for the first major time. He's kind of a serious force to be reckoned with throughout this episode's runtime, and just how seriously he takes himself and how seriously everyone else takes him is honestly kind of hilarious. It's a fun episode, and it's honestly nice seeing how much the Dean really does love and want the best for Greendale. I know that sounds like a duh moment, but it's still always nice to see it play out. A fun episode throughout, I'll put this above Introduction to Statistics. Season 3, Episode 9, Foosball and Nocturnal Vigilantism This episode hits a lot of pretty good emotional beats, and it's the first Jeff and Shirley episode we've gotten in a while. Which is kind of strange, because while on purely the surface level they seem like they'd have little in common, I find the two to have amazing chemistry when they're paired together. This episode has them pairing up to take down some foosball guys, because Shirley is strangely good at foosball. The flashback where we see young Shirley bullying a kid and it turns out to be Jeff is heartbreaking, but the scene at the very end of Jeff and Shirley walking off as friends, and then we see them as kids, is a fantastic moment. As is the weird anime moment where they're just yelling and then apologizing to each other, another really good episode right above Paradigms of Human Memory. Season 3, Episode 10, Regional Holiday Music Remember last season, where we briefly mentioned that the study group filled in for the Glee Club after they all died in a bus crash? Well, now the new Glee Club has had a mental breakdown, and the study group is slowly being infected by Glee through music to fill in and try to go to regionals. This is a musical episode, and honestly, all of the songs bang. Troy and Abed's rap goes harder than it has any right to, and the line, I am Jehovah's most secret witness, is arguably the hardest line in all of rap. Period. Annie getting dumber and dumber as the song goes on is absolutely hilarious. And the bit at the end where Britta comes on stage and the Dean just says, Oh, Britta's in this? Gets me every time. An absolute banger of an episode. I'll place this just above horror fiction in Seven Spooky Steps. 
Season 3, Episode 11, Urban Matrimony in the Sandwich Arts. This is another one of those episodes that's setting up quite a lot for the future of the series. This is the first time we're introduced to Shirley Sandwiches, the sandwich shop that Shirley and Pierce decide to try and open on campus, as well as Shirley remarrying Andre. Britta being reluctantly good at wedding planning and being absolutely miserable the entire time about it is pretty funny. I also like that Shirley and Andre do have a pretty in-depth discussion about how their marriage this time can't be like last time, because, well, last time their marriage failed. If they do love each other and want to make this work, things need to be different. And I think that's a nice touch and something you don't always get to see on TV. A good episode, not the best, but still enjoyable. Between conspiracy theories and interior design and romantic expressionism. Season 3, Episode 12, Contemporary Impressionists. It's a new semester, and a few things have happened off-screen between then and now. Abed has found a celebrity impersonator business where he can hire impersonators to reenact movie scenes, and Jeff has started seeing a new therapist and is on anti-anxiety medication, which is leading to his self-confidence reaching unhealthy levels. And these two problems end up kind of playing off of each other, after we find out that Abed has built up a pretty massive debt with the company. It's an okay episode, I was never the biggest fan of it, but it certainly has its share of funny moments right below basic rocket science. Season 3, Episode 13, Digital Exploration of Interior Design This episode introduces us to Subway, both the character and the sandwich shop. Oh hey, it's Keith from Scrubs! It's an okay episode, but I don't think it shines at all when looking at the episodes around it. Again, not bad, just not nearly as great as some of these other episodes. There are some points here and there that pop, but I think this episode mainly just serves as a prologue for what comes next just above Debate 109. Season 3, Episode 14, Pillows and Blankets This episode picks up where the last left off, a war between Troy and Abed's blanket and pillow forts. This episode takes the form of a Civil War mockumentary voiced by Keith David who actually will show up later in the series. This episode is one of those dumb, fun episodes. It's a stupid premise pushed to the limits, but it's just so much fun to sit back and watch. And by the end of the episode, it actually kind of wraps back around to just being sweet. Troy and Abed have decided they won't be friends anymore when the war is officially over. And thus, even though the rest of the fighting is done, they're refusing to stop. They want to actually continue being friends so badly, they'll continually hit each other. And Jeff going into the Dean's office to grab the magical friendship hats is a nice moment for his character. An absolutely fantastic episode. I actually place this right above Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. Season 3, Episode 15, Origins of Vampire Mythology I forgot about this episode, which kind of says everything that I'd want to about it. Britta's carny ex is back in town and she's afraid she's going to text him, so Annie is in charge of making sure that doesn't happen. It's pretty boring all things considered. There is a good bit of growth from Britta at the end of the episode, when Annie gets on Britta about getting over this guy the minute something nice is said from him and it does a fairly good job of pushing forward the Britta and Troy relationship. But aside from that, there isn't much more I have to say about it. I can give you a Blade fun fact, I guess. Uh, in Blade Trinity, Wesley Snipes refused to open his eyes for a scene, so they had to CGI eyes opening. Above football feminism in you. Season 3, Episode 16, Virtual Systems Analysis So this is another really weird episode. And it's kind of hard to talk about and get exactly how I'm feeling about it out onto the page. This episode is a deep dive into how Abed is actually feeling about Troy getting out and actually dating someone. He and Annie go into the Dreamatorium, and Annie makes her way through Abed's psyche and eventually gets to see how Abed is afraid of Troy emotionally maturing beyond him if he gets a serious girlfriend. He's simply afraid of being alone. But Annie actually ends up kind of showing that no matter what happens with Troy, there are other people Abed can still be weird with. But while I think this episode wants to dive into a lot of really interesting ideas, I think the actual execution of everything is a bit lacking. It's not the worst of the season, but it's certainly nowhere near the top. Below Origins of Vampire Mythology Season 3, Episode 17, Basic Lupine Urology I think this episode is incredibly fun the entire way through. It's been a few episodes since a strange over-the-top episode, and this feels like a great way to get back into that. The study group's biology class yam has been murdered. To death. 
and this episode is basically Law & Order from this point onwards. It's a super fun homage and a pretty good time. The episode is hilarious throughout, and at the end of the episode, there's a pretty big swerve when we find out that Starburns died in a meth lab explosion off camera. That's actually how the episode ends, which is a pretty good setup for the next episode. Anyways, I think it's a good time. I'll put it above contemporary American poultry. Season 3, Episode 18, Course Listing Unavailable I know this is something I've said quite a few times by this point, but this is one of those episodes that sits in a weird spot for me. There are some parts of it that shine, but a good bit of it just kind of drags, at least in my opinion. The Chang Child Soldier storyline never really grabbed me, which is something I'm sure I'll say once or twice over the next couple of episodes. And this episode kicks off the whole Chang taking over Greendale arc, which is one of my least favorites. Maybe that's just because it drags on a bit long for my taste, I'm not sure. Anyways, a pretty middling episode, maybe a bit above average. Season 3, Episode 19, Curriculum Unavailable Again, this one fits in a bit of a weird place. Much like their previous clip show episode, this one has some pretty bold takes on what exactly a clip show episode can even be. In some aspects, I think it's even better than Paradigms of Human Memory, but I think the actual framing mechanism behind everything, the study group talking to a therapist who's trying to convince them that they're all clinically insane, isn't nearly as good. In fact, I don't really like it that much. But putting that aside, I think this is a very strong episode with a lot of really good writing and some solid jokes. The bit at the beginning with the cop being super into bricks is strangely hilarious. A good episode bogged down by just one or two parts. Above beginner pottery. Season 3, Episode 20, Digital Estate Planning I absolutely love this episode. For the longest time, I had a journey to the center of Hawthorne's shirt that I basically wore out because I loved it so much. This episode is one of those that kind of plays with the show's actual medium. This time around, the group is playing a pixelated 2D video game, with a person who gets to the center of Hawthorne getting all of Pierce's inheritance. Oh yeah, did I not mention, Pierce's dad died. Anyways, this episode has a lot of focus on Pierce, his relationship with his father, and his relationship with Gilbert, who it turns out is actually his half-brother. This episode is absolutely hilarious, incredibly iconic, and is just a blast throughout. The only possible negative I can even think of with this is it kind of feels out of place when binging the series. Like last episode, the study group found out that the Dean isn't the Dean and he's being held hostage by Chang. And now they're playing a video game. Granted, the idea that death kind of comes from nowhere is an interesting way to look at it, but still, you think they'd be more worried about the Dean or something. An absolutely fantastic episode. I'm putting this at the top of the list. Also, did you know that there was actually a community effort to actually make this game? You can go play that. It's really fun. Season 3, Episode 21, The First Chang Dynasty This is the show's take on a heist episode, and officially the conclusion to Chang taking over Greendale arc, which, I guess, in retrospect, I like more than I actually remembered liking it. On rewatches, I'm usually not looking forward to this arc, but all of the episodes in it are actually pretty good. Weird. Anyways, this is another fun episode. Chang's trying to burn down the school, and definitely won't murder everyone by accident. Because I mean, obviously fire can't go through doors. It's not a ghost. The over-the-top nature of the Greendale Seven's plan and how well it works is hilarious as always. Chang's character is fantastic throughout. A lot of the time his character can be a bit much in my opinion, but in an episode like this, I think that absolutely makes sense. Not quite as good as the previous episode, but still a really good one. Right below Contemporary American Poultry. Season 3, Episode 22, Introduction to Finality This feels like it could have been a series finale instead of a season finale. And that's because, well, it could have been. Community faced cancellation a lot. This episode has a lot of emotional payoff for the last several seasons. Jeff faces off against Alan, the lawyer who ratted him out to the bar and ends up actually thanking him. Troy, who last episode made a deal to join the air conditioner repair school, is like their messiah or something? Anyways, that mini arc also wraps here. Shirley and Pierce open the sandwich shop together, and Troy actually moves into the room that was the Dreamatorium, with Abed making his own mini version. There are a lot of really nice wrap ups, a fantastic way to send the season out, between advanced Dungeons and Dragons and regional holiday music. 
Season 3 Review This is another absolutely incredible season of TV. It features many episodes that I would consider the best of the best in terms of the series, and honestly sitcoms as a whole. But on the other end of things, some of the episodes were a bit on the lower end. But hot dang, when this season was on, it was on. There were a lot of really great character moments and payoffs throughout the season, and honestly, while I'm happy that the series still has a few more seasons to go, it could have ended here and still been great. That's how powerful the ending of the season was, and how well it really wrapped things up. But from here, we've reached a strange spot. Because Dan Harmon, behind the scenes, was having a lot of problems, particularly with Chevy Chase. And for this next season, he's not here. So with that, let's jump headfirst into Season 4. Season 4, Episode 1, History 101 Oh, wow, this is not a good start to Community without Dan Harmon. This episode is a rough one. The show is still kind of using many of the same jokes it did, and they feel, well, not as fresh anymore. Abed's refusal of reality seems like it could be a good idea for an episode. In fact, it's something that we've seen before. But this time, the medium changes don't work quite as well in my opinion. He imagined himself in the Rankin Bass style of animation because he was having a Christmas-related breakdown. Community Babies doesn't really relate to anything that's happening. It kind of feels disjointed is probably the right word. Also, we're introduced to Changnesia, kind of. A really rough start, bottom of the list. Season 4, Episode 2, Paranormal Parentage This episode is a good bit better than the previous. It's not fantastic, but hey, at least it's a step up. It's this season's Halloween episode and is taking place at Pierce's mansion, which he's claiming is haunted. I like both the setup and the location of this episode. It's a good way to get everyone into a literal haunted mansion. And Pierce's family is weird enough that you can definitely buy that they'd have these weird hidden doors and rooms and everything. The swing that Troy finds is also hilarious. And the resolution with Pierce and Gilbert is pretty nice, even if Gilbert is being really creepy about it. Middle of the road overall, above Anthropology 101. Season 4, Episode 3, Conventions of Space and Time Well, let's head back to the bottom. This is another really rough one. The study group is heading to an Inspector space-time convention. Troy and Britta are doing relationship things while Abed is meeting with a new friend. This turns into, obviously, a Troy and Abed episode, which, when done right, are usually some of the best. There's also the strangeness of the Jeff and Annie storyline. The whole storyline, to me, feels like an absolute mess. Like, no one really knew what was going on and why. Not to mention that Pierce and Shirley are in this episode even though their storylines could have easily been cut, and that time could have been used to focus on the other plot lines that just kind of feel half-baked. I mean, we'll talk about this a bit later, but Chevy Chase isn't in a lot of these episodes. I get that they needed to use him when they could, but this is the perfect opportunity to have not used him. Anyways, this is the new lowest ranked episode. Season 4, Episode 4, Alternative History of the German Invasion We're really on a bit of a tear here for some not so good episodes. The German students from a while back are in the villain role. Or should I say the hero role because this episode shines light on the study group being the real villains of Greendale. The episode itself just isn't funny. I can think of like one thing in this episode that I laughed at the Germans knowing Hogan's heroes as Hogan's villains. That's it, I don't know what else to say, it's a really forgettable episode. And I know I always get comments about how there's more to a show than being funny, which is correct, but at the end of the day, this is supposed to be a sitcom, a situational comedy. When there's no comedy, what's the point? It's just a situation, above conventions of space and time, because while there's less to say about it, at least it isn't as bad as that. Season 4, Episode 5, Cooperative Escapism and Familial Relations Now we're doing a Thanksgiving episode, and boy is it a big one. Jeff is finally meeting his father, years after he'd left. So remember how maybe 20-30 seconds ago I was talking about how if you take the comedy away from sitcoms, you're just left with a situation? Well, this episode decides to focus more on the emotional weight of family. 
Jeff kind of finds out that he's better off because his father left, and the group finds out that Shirley had invited everyone to Thanksgiving at her place to act as a buffer for her husband's family. Also, Andre never shows up again for the rest of the show. That's a little weird for a character who got so much build up in screen time. Anyways, this show goes for emotional hits over comedic hits, and honestly, I think that makes it a bit stronger overall because many of these emotional hits, well, hit. I'll actually put this above the pilot. Season 4, Episode 6, Advanced Documentary Filmmaking So this episode decides to take an in-depth look at Ben Chang and Changnesia, a plotline that I'm not really the biggest fan of. And unlike my expectations of the Chang taking over Greendale arc, these expectations feel like they're already holding more ground. This whole season already felt like it didn't fully understand the characters, and Ben Chang might be the best example of that. It really feels like they weren't sure how to use him, but his character was so loved that they felt that they had to keep him. And I feel like taking an in-depth look at something like this makes you stop and realize how stupid the whole thing kind of is. And not in the usual community way of being stupid, but just kind of dumb. I guess the reveal that the whole Changnesia thing is indeed fake at least makes it a bit better, but it's a pretty middling episode. Maybe a bit below average. Above Custody Law in Eastern European Diplomacy. Season 4, Episode 7, Economics of Marine Biology. This might be the first episode of the season that, to me, feels like it could actually be a community episode. It still has its problems and doesn't remotely reach the heights that we've seen the series reach in the past. In fact, it barely reaches the middle of the pack, but still, it has its moments. I like seeing Jeff really connecting with Pierce, but the whale subplot where everyone's trying to pretend that the school's something it isn't is not that great. Like, yeah, you're lying to get this kid to go to your school, but then what? What happens when you don't actually have Sean White as a professor? It's a community college, he can just leave. That brings the episode down a bit in my mind, just below advanced documentary filmmaking. Season 4, Episode 8, Herstory of Dance Brita episodes are maybe the hardest episodes to pull off, at least that's how I've usually viewed them. Brita needs to kind of walk this fine line between being pathetic and endearing. It's a very fine line, and I don't know if this episode fully walks it successfully. The Abed storyline is alright, we're introduced to Brie Larson who's playing something of a romantic interest for Abed, an idea I like that really hasn't been explored yet. Wait, that's the last she's in this season? Huh, well, maybe we can revisit that idea later. I also like that Pierce actually saves the day for Britta, even if it does feel a smidge out of character for him. Above Advanced Criminal Law Season 4, Episode 9, Intro to Felt Surrogacy After a few episodes where it felt like the season was settling into itself, this one drags us back down into the mud. As much as I love Muppets, and ask basically anyone who knows me, I love the Muppets, the change in medium once again doesn't really convey anything outside of just doing something different. There's no real reason behind it other than they wanted to use puppets to tell a story. Though I do think it's funny that the Dean just happens to have puppets of the study group ready to go. Second worst of the series so far. Season 4, Episode 10, Intro to Knots now it's time for this season's Christmas episode, and for some reason, this one devolves into the study group taking their history professor hostage. Yeah, it's as out of nowhere as it could be. They do a lot of dumb stuff throughout the series run, but this one is like just straight up a felony. They're trying to do like a Hitchcock parody, but it falls pretty flat. There's some weird pacing choices that kind of bog the whole episode down. It's really just a strange amount of setup. Professor Cornwallis is a pretty forgettable character who I haven't even mentioned yet, right below basic genealogy. Season 4, Episode 11, Basic Human Anatomy Time for a classic switch em up episode. Troy and Abed seemingly switch bodies after they both hold a copy of Freaky Friday and say, I, I wish, wish I could, could switch places, places with you for, you just, for just one, one day. day. <laughs> Huh, that's weird. 
Well, the best I can say about this episode is that Donald Glover, Danny Pudi, and Jim Rash all do exceptional jobs portraying another character's personality in their bodies. But that's probably also the only nice thing I can really say about this one. It's apparently the anniversary of Britta and Troy beginning to date. I haven't really brought up that relationship much because the whole thing has felt kind of jumbled. Like, it's mainly been in the background of most episodes, and it felt like they were unsure what exactly to do with the couple. And their breakup is equally confusing, because Troy has Abed break up with Britta for him. That's a shitty thing to do. I get that Troy has never been in a serious relationship and he's trying to tread carefully, but this is as not carefully as you could tread. And while it's nice that Troy and Abed are close enough that they're able to pull this off, the episode doesn't quite come together as well as I'd like. What's probably the highlight of the episode for me is the Dean believing that he switched bodies with Jeff. He plays that part so ridiculously well that you can't help but laugh at least a little. But overall, I think this episode is probably pretty low on the list, below History 101. Season 4, Episode 12, Heroic Origins. Oh hey, I'm back to normal. A lot of people point directly to this episode when talking about how far exactly the show falls during this season. And that's kind of how I feel about it as well. It's a great representation of everything that goes wrong with the season. It fundamentally misunderstands who the characters were and tries to give the entire series a sense of being fated to happen. The characters have apparently all interacted in the past, and some are the reasons that others are even at Greendale. In past episodes, I did like when we found out that the study group had had some past interactions. I think Shirley and Jeff knowing each other briefly as children, and the two of them getting past that and accepting that they're friends now and better people, is sweet. I think that Jeff defending the stripper that Shirley's husband cheated on her with and Britta was also at the courthouse thanking Jeff is convoluted. It's needless and adds little to nothing. There are some funny jokes littered throughout, but that's not nearly enough to save this one. Above Competitive Ecology Season 4, Episode 13, Advanced Introduction to Finality This is the point where Jeff is supposed to graduate from Greendale. It's supposed to be kind of bittersweet because, as far as everyone knew, this was probably the end of the series. But that doesn't really happen in my opinion. Instead, we spend a solid portion of the episode fighting the darkest timeline characters before getting the rug pulled out from under us that it was all a dream. Which is obvious, but it's also kind of a weird note to go out on. I don't like this one. It feels not like a community episode, and honestly, nowhere in its runtime does it even approach what has made the show work for the first three seasons. It's not quite the bottom of the bottom, but it's right above Intro to Felt Surrogacy. Season 4 Review This season is infamous among community fans. It's become known as the gas leak year because of how everyone acting incredibly out of character was explained. A gas leak. Once again, this is your reminder to pause this video and go check your carbon monoxide detectors. Welcome back. But this season just had too many problems and things going against it. This was the first season I didn't watch live because there was a pretty lengthy wait between seasons. Dan Harmon aside, many creatives actually left the show around this time. This left the show in a strange state, and the people who are brought in to salvage the show for another season certainly tried their best, even if they weren't quite sure what they were getting themselves into. And finally, we also had the strange amount of Pierce this season. It's his last season. There was a lot going on behind the scenes that I'm not going to get into, but that's why he's conspicuously absent for like half the episodes. It's super strange. Anyways, with the bottom half of this list being taken over by the fourth season, let's push onwards to Season 5 and the return of Dan Harmon. Season 5, Episode 1, Repilot. With all that, we're back. And hot dang, is this episode already much better than anything we've seen from the show in a hot minute. We're back at Greendale. Everyone has graduated and, well, no one's life is going well. No one's doing what they wanted to do, and no one's happy. And for a minute, they are all tricked by Jeff into blaming Greendale. But by the end, they've all decided to re-enroll at Greendale and follow new passions. Except for Jeff, who's going to be teaching law. Yeah, it turns out he absolutely failed going out on his own as a lawyer. As its name would suggest, this episode functions essentially as a new pilot. Resetting the status quo going forward and being fairly funny along the way a slightly above average episode, which feels like an absolute godsend at this point, above aerodynamics of gender. 
Season 5, Episode 2, Introduction to Teaching. This episode introduces us to the character who, for now, is going to be serving as the replacement for Pierce, Buzz Hickey, who's played by Jonathan Banks. We'll talk about his character a bit more as the season goes on, because yes, Pierce is no longer with us. He's still alive, for now, but he's no longer at Greendale. This time we're focusing more on how Jeff will fare as a teacher. Probably not well considering he was a fake lawyer for a long time and he has little to no care for, well, most people. But surprisingly, he finds that he enjoys teaching and discussing law, or at least how to argue. And while Jeff being a teacher may have been something that community probably would have made fun of, strangely, it feels kind of natural. Another pretty good episode above Debate 109. Season 5, Episode 3, Basic Intergluteal Numismatics. This is a really fun episode. The Ass Crack Bandit is once again wreaking havoc across the campus of Greendale, and basically everyone is pitching in to find out who exactly the Ass Crack Bandit is once and for all, to finally bring the Quarter Slinger to justice. There's not a lot to say about this one, honestly. It's pretty funny, it gives every character a bit in the spotlight, and it's just straight up enjoyable to watch. I'll put this below Beginner Pottery. Season 5, Episode 4, Cooperative Polygraphy. This episode kills Pierce, as in his character literally dies. And this episode has the study group gather to be given their bequeathments. It's very similar to that other time the same thing more or less happened, except that time he was faking it. This episode is both very funny and surprisingly emotional. At first, the lawyer goes around basically doing what Pierce did last time, insulting and sowing discord between the rest of the study group. But then, at the end, when the bequeathments are given out alongside a large container of Pierce's sperm, these genuinely heartfelt and kind statements are spoken. It's super sweet hearing what Pierce did genuinely think of everyone in the group, and it shows how far his relationship with the rest of the group had come since that earlier episode. And with his gifting of his fortune to Troy, this sets up Troy's departure from the show. A beautifully sweet episode that captures everything that worked with Pierce's character. Very high on the list, right below Modern Warfare. Season 5, Episode 5, Geothermal Escapism. Here we are, the Troy send-off episode. In hot damn, this is really the way to do it. Much like the paintball episodes of yesteryear, this takes an insane concept and dials it up to 10. But now they're doing an insane game of the floor is lava instead of paintball. The episode is a long build up to the realization that Abed is seeing the floor as actual lava because he's emotionally unprepared to let his first friend leave. It all culminates in this fantastic scene of Troy saying goodbye to everyone in the study group one at a time. They're all really heartfelt moments. Aside from the obvious Troy and Abed goodbye, I actually think the one that stuck with me the most was the one with Jeff where Jeff basically admits that Troy is becoming a more well-rounded person than him just by being brave enough to take this leap. Another absolute banger of an episode. Best of the season so far, above cooperative calligraphy. Season 5, Episode 6, Analysis of Cork-Based Networking. Okay, so that was a pretty good couple of episodes, but this one brings us back to reality a bit. It's not nearly as good as the previous ones, which is fair because those episodes were fantastic. This is also a much simpler episode than the last few and kind of a bit of an emotional resp- This episode just follows two main plot lines. One about trying to get a cork board put up, and the other about putting together a school dance. Pretty low stakes stuff. A good breather. The episode is fairly funny, but nothing really sticks out aside from probably the very end where Garrett realizes that it's actually a bear dance and not a fat dog dance. The bear dance! Before the episode just cuts off. Mid-tier. Season 5, Episode 7. Bondage in Beta Male Sexuality. I actually really liked this episode. Abed is forced to deal with his own actions, something that, well, hasn't really happened for a good bit. After he's destroyed a cartoon that Hickey was working on, Abed is handcuffed to a filing cabinet and forced to miss seeing a Kick Puncher movie in theaters. But despite all of that, this is actually a Britta episode. Duncan is trying to get with her. Yeah, Duncan's back and serving a major role in this one, 
and Britta's having a bit of a midlife crisis. And we actually see a good bit of growth from Duncan in just this episode, as he tells Britta to basically deal with her shit instead of trying to get with her. It's nice being back in a place where we're seeing actual character growth. A pretty good episode below comparative religion. Season 5, Episode 8, App Development and Condiments This is like just that episode of Black Mirror, but also before that episode of Black Mirror. So the series has done a lot of really strange concept episodes, and of all of them, I feel like this one doesn't work nearly as well. Basically, an app lets you rate people based on your interactions with them. The higher rated you are, the more your ratings hold weight. So it, of course, devolves into a strange dystopia. It's nothing that special one way or the other. I think the concept is a cool one, but overall I don't know if I can rate it anything above average. Season 5, Episode 9, VCR Maintenance and Educational Publishing Most importantly in this episode, we're introduced to the fantastic freestyle rap from the Dean. It's absolutely hilarious and gets me every single time I watch it. But that's probably like the only part of this episode that makes me laugh. The episode mainly focuses on Annie and Abed trying to figure out who's going to be their third roommate. Abed's girlfriend, who we haven't seen since last season, or Annie's brother. There's this weird VHS game they play with Vince Gilligan as a host. It's a relatively forgettable episode. Definitely a bit lower on the list. Even with that sick rap at the beginning, it's just above Origins of Vampire Mythology. Season 5, Episode 10, Advanced Advanced Dungeons & Dragons It's time for another D&D episode, and while this isn't nearly as good as the last, it's still a pretty fun watch. This episode actually even follows a super similar structure to the previous D&D episode. The group is now split between Hickey and his son, with the people with Hickey learning to take his side and the same going on with his son. They're basically competing to see who can kill the BBG quickest. All around, it's a fun and pretty funny episode. The Dean being the standout to me, but David Cross, who plays Hickey's son, is also great in his role. And while it's certainly not on the level as its predecessor, it's still a good episode in its own right, trying to accomplish different goals. Just above Curriculum Unavailable. Season 5, Episode 11, G.I. Jeff as the previous episode was a spiritual successor to the original Dungeons & Dragons episode, this one I think is a spiritual successor to Abed's Uncontrollable Christmas. This time, it's Jeff's dream that we're seeing. Jeff is not doing great after mixing an entire fifth of scotch, which is already way too much, with these supposed youth pills he got. He basically winds up ODing and is fighting his way out of a hallucination. All of this because he's turning 40 which makes his weird on-again, off-again relationship with Annie much weirder. Another pretty fun episode that I think does a fairly good job of looking at Jeff's inner thoughts and his views on aging. An above-average episode, Above Home Economics. Season 5, Episode 12, Basic Story So the whole season has focused around making Greendale a better place through the Save Greendale committee. And for the first time ever, it turns out that Greendale is actually an asset. So of course, the most logical next step is to sell the college to Subway. The business, not the person. And, oh crap, is that Jared? Jesus. Anyways, this is part one of what's a two-part season finale, but it holds up fairly well on its own while setting up the next episode to finish off the season. Overall, an average episode. Season 5, Episode 13, Basic Sandwich. And now, here's the follow-up. They're hunting for the secret Greendale treasure, with them eventually uncovering that the Greendale founder has been living all alone in the basement with his computer he's fallen in love with. It's a weird conclusion to the season, which sounds like it could work for the show, but I actually think I like the previous episode more. There are a few good jokes here and there, but I think they're mostly unsuccessful in what they seem like they were going for the whole time. I'll put this below average on the list for the time being, above cooperative escapism and familial relations. Season 5 Review Let's get the obvious out of the way. Yes, this season is obviously a vast improvement over Season 4, but like almost anything would be. By this time, the show is starting to show some of its cracks and its age, not to mention that Dan Harmon was probably a bit busy also working on his other show that started airing at basically the same time, the first season of Rick and Morty. And while these shows are obviously very different, 
it's probably not easy trying to write for two shows that rely on somewhat similar styles of humor. Anyways, we're one season away from finishing this whole deal. On to the Yahoo year. Season 6. Season 6, Episode 1, Ladders. Okay, let's get into it. By this point, a lot of characters are gone, now including Shirley and Hickey, the professor who was just introduced last season as a major character. So we're really down to four of our main characters by this point. Chang's taking a spot in the study group, or whatever we're calling it now, and a new character, Frankie, is joining as well. Much like Repilot, I think this one does a pretty good job of resetting the status quo and showing us generally where the season will go. It has some fairly funny moments, and I think that it actually gets funnier the longer the episode goes on. An okay episode and a fine start to the season. Season 6, Episode 2, Lawnmower Maintenance and Postnatal Care. And now we're introduced to the final main character of the season, Elroy. We're also introduced to Britta's parents who have been basically paying her rent and, well, everything for a while. Britta and her parents have a fairly funny dynamic, but I think that that storyline overstays its welcome a bit. The hardest I probably laughed was at the Dean in VR, where every time he does basically anything at all, he just exclaims, And Jesus wept. For there were no more worlds to conquer. Not the best episode, a little worse than the previous in my opinion. Season 6, Episode 3, Basic Crisis Room Decorum. An ad is going to be run showing that Greendale once gave a degree to a dog. So the Save Greendale committee is in crisis mode trying to figure out how to discredit this or get out in front of it or whatever. It's a pretty fun ride and a fairly good look at just how big of a train wreck Greendale really was. Is? Where do we stand on this now? The end of the episode where the Dean makes a genuine commercial after they find out that the dog didn't get his degree only because of a technicality is a nice touch. It's an alright episode, but it doesn't touch the top spots of the list. Below advanced documentary filmmaking. Season 6, Episode 4, Queer Studies and Advanced Waxing. Okay, so full disclosure, I absolutely love the entire Karate Kid franchise. I always have. I own almost all of the movies, just not the Jaden Smith movie, because even I don't hate myself that much. So maybe my absolute love of Karate Kid is showing through, but I actually really liked this episode. The Dean is a major part of this one. He's been offered a spot on the school board if he'll be their token game member. But that's fairly reductive in a number of ways. That's only one-seventh of what he actually is. Chang and Annie are both getting ready to take part in a stage performance of, of course, Karate Kid, with Ben Chang putting on the performance of a lifetime as Mr. Miyagi, and Annie eventually getting kicked out of the show. A really fun episode, best of the season so far, just below basic rocket science. Season 6, Episode 5, Laws of Robotics and Party Rights Greendale has a new program in order where they're having some local prisoners take classes via, well, they're basically iPads. I think this episode has some funny bits, but overall, it's just another that sits in a weird space for me. Despite Jeff supposedly learning to love teaching, or at least enjoy it last season, he's back to just putting Planet Earth on. Which seems like maybe a step back for him? The fight Jeff gets into with the prisoner is funny for a minute or two, but I think it goes on for too long. And the ending portion where the Dean carries off Jeff's makeshift iPad on a broom is hilarious. Then there's the end card where everyone is remoting in, and it just reminds me of working remotely. And that's a bummer. Another pretty average episode, Above Anthropology 101. Season 6, Episode 6, Basic Email Security. I forget about this episode a lot of the time. I had to watch it twice on this watch through. The first time I like blanked out of my memory. I didn't take any notes on my thoughts, I just mindlessly watched and spaced out. That's the only time this happened on this entire watch through. Even with season 4 I was basically hate writing notes as I went along. But here for whatever reason, I just checked out and had to rewatch. Anyways this one's okay, below average but nothing egregious. Season 6, Episode 7, Advanced Safety Features In my mind, this is probably the weakest episode of the season so far. 
Jeff is trying desperately to find out why Elroy doesn't like him. So he puts on a concert and that kind of backfires because Elroy used to date the singer. But then it doesn't backfire because it helps Elroy move on. It's pretty meh. Subway's also back, the person, not the company. Now he's going by Rick and he and Britta kind of rekindle their relationship for a bit. Then it doesn't work out, it's pretty meh. Another pretty forgettable episode, I'll place this pretty low on the list. Season 6, Episode 8, Intro to Recycled Cinema Chang has gone off and gotten famous. Apparently playing Mr. Miyagi on stage really awakened something in him. He's famous from commercials and now he's even maybe doing a Spielberg movie. It's a pretty huge Chang change. And Abed has the rights to a movie he was filming with Chang from before he was famous. So now they're going to finish the movie and turn it for a quick buck. It's another episode that I'm really not a huge fan of. I guess Clip Clop is funny, which is also maybe a reference to Rick and Morty, another of Harmon's shows. I'm not sure. I just really can't get into this one. Better than the previous, but not by much. Below Virtual Systems Analysis. Season 6, Episode 9, Grifting 101. I don't know if I'm running out of steam or if the show is. I haven't written this all in one go, it's been a fairly slow process while I worked on other videos. So my guess is that we just hit something of a rough patch. This episode feels like the conspiracy episode a few seasons back, but not quite as good. The briefcase bits are funny, I guess, but I find myself laughing a lot less now than I was even just a season ago. Like the show is basically running on fumes at this point. Above Social Psychology Season 6, Episode 10, Basic RV Repair in Palmistry So here is this season's take on a bottle episode. The gang is trapped in an RV and they've killed the battery. Abed is basically breaking down the show's typical episodic format. He keeps trying to use flashbacks to change his present by remembering things differently. It's a fairly funny concept, but I don't know if it's worth being an entire episode. Like they do that bit several times and it probably would have worked like maybe once. One of the worst of the season in my opinion, below Intro to Recycled Cinema. Season 6, Episode 11, Modern Espionage Here is the final paintball episode of the series. I actually like what they do with it this go around. The paintball game is a secret this time. It's like half spy thriller, half paintball. It's a really fun time. If they didn't knock this episode out of the park, it would have been an absolutely huge disappointment. There are a lot of really fun scenes throughout this one. The Dean's Captain America elevator scene is absolutely fantastic. The Todd and Starbird scene is also really fun. It's probably the most fun I've had during an episode this entire season, and it's a good successor to the previous paintball episodes. Above Foosball and Nocturnal Vigilantism Season 6, Episode 12, Wedding Videography So something that a lot of people have noted about modern Rick and Morty are all of the incest episodes and plot lines. And yep, we have one right here. Garrett is getting married to Stacy, and during the wedding reception they find out that they're actually cousins. Yeah, we'll kind of ignore that for the time being. There are some really funny moments littered throughout. Elroy acting as the white person hype man is hilarious, as is Abed telling Annie not to gym the camera. Man, we've really come full circle on these reviews, huh? Despite the strange plot twist that the episode takes, I really enjoyed this one. We're almost at the end of the series, and it's nice having an episode where we see just how much the main characters all enjoy just being together. It's a nice touch. Season 6, Episode 13 Emotional Consequences of Broadcast Television I've watched a lot of TV over the years. I've seen a lot of series finales, both great and terrible. And for some reason, this one always breaks me. Annie and Abed are leaving. Annie's going to intern at the FBI and Abed's going to be a PA. That'll bring the original study group members still there down to just Jeff and Britta. So a good portion of the episode is the group sitting around and imagining what a new season could look like. It's pretty funny seeing everyone's personalities shining through. Finally, Jeff leaves to go to Greendale. He has an admittedly sweet moment with Annie, realizing he needs to let her go, at least for now, before everyone else joins. Then we see Jeff dropping Annie and Abed off at the airport. And while he does hug Annie, 
he gives Abed this really sweet and pretty long hug. It's really nice seeing that Jeff does recognize that Abed saved him. Abed gave him the life he has now and the friends he's going to go hang out with. And that everyone's grown up and they're ready to go off and face life. They don't need each other anymore, but they'll always be friends. A fantastic way to send the series off. Okay, that's my thoughts on every episode. So now let's go through where everything ended up on the list. Season 4, Episode 3, Conventions of Space and Time Season 4, Episode 9, Intro to Felt Surrogacy Season 4, Episode 13, Advanced Introduction to Finality Season 4, Episode 4, Alternative History of the German Invasion Season 4, Episode 11, Basic Human Anatomy Season 4, Episode 1, History 101 Season 4, Episode 10, Intro to Knots Season 1, Episode 18, Basic Genealogy Season 1, Episode 14, Interpretive Dance Season 2, Episode 20, Competitive Wine Tasting Season 3, Episode 4, Competitive Ecology Season 4, Episode 12, Heroic Origins Season 1, Episode 16, Communication Studies Season 1, Episode 6, Football, Feminism, and You Season 6, Episode 7, Advanced Safety Features Season 3, Episode 16, Virtual Systems Analysis Season 6, Episode 10, Basic RV Repair in Palmistry Season 6, Episode 8, Intro to Recycled Cinema Season 3, Episode 15, Origins of Vampire Mythology Season 5, Episode 9, VCR Maintenance in Educational Publishing Season 2, Episode 5, Messianic Myths and Ancient Peoples Season 6, Episode 6, Basic Email Security Season 1, Episode 4, Social Psychology Season 6, Episode 9, Grifting 101 Season 2, Episode 13, Celebrity Pharmacology 212 Season 1, Episode 1, Pilot Season 4, Episode 5, Cooperative Escapism and Familial Relations Season 6, Episode 2, Lawnmower Maintenance and Postnatal Care Season 5, Episode 13, Basic Sandwich Season 2, Episode 18, Custody Law and Eastern European Diplomacy Season 4, Episode 7, Economics of Marine Biology Season 6, Episode 3, Basic Crisis Room Decorum Season 4, Episode 6, Advanced Documentary Filmmaking Season 1, Episode 11, The Politics of Human Sexuality Season 1, Episode 5, Advanced Criminal Law Season 4, Episode 8, Herstory of Dance Season 1, Episode 13, Investigative Journalism Season 2, Episode 1, Anthropology 101 Season 6, Episode 5, Laws of Robotics and Party Rights Season 4, Episode 2, Paranormal Parentage Season 3, Episode 2, Geography of Global Conflict Season 1, Episode 22, The Art of Discourse Season 1, Episode 9, Debate 109 
Season 5, Episode 2, Introduction to Teaching. Season 3, Episode 13, Digital Exploration of Interior Design. Season 1, Episode 17, Physical Education. Season 3, Episode 7, Studies in Modern Movement. Season 6, Episode 1, Ladders. Season 5, Episode 6, Analysis of Cork-Based Networking. Season 2, Episode 12, Asian Population Studies. Season 5, Episode 12, Basic Story. Season 1, Episode 25, Pascal's Triangle Revisited. Season 1, Episode 3, Introduction to Film. Season 5, Episode 8, App Development in Condiments. Season 2, Episode 17, Intro to Political Science. Season 2, Episode 22, Applied Anthropology and Culinary Arts. Season 2, Episode 3, The Psychology of Letting Go. Season 1, Episode 2, Spanish 101. Season 1, Episode 20, The Science of Delusion. Season 1, Episode 24, English as a Second Language. Season 2, Episode 7, Aerodynamics of Gender. Season 5, Episode 1, Repilot. Season 2, Episode 2, Accounting for Lawyers. Season 3, Episode 1, Biology 101. Season 1, Episode 8, Home Economics. Season 5, Episode 11, G.I. Jeff. Season 3, Episode 18, Course Listing Unavailable. Season 2, Episode 9, Conspiracy Theories and Interior Design. Season 3, Episode 11, Urban Matrimony in the Sandwich Arts. Season 1, Episode 15, Romantic Expressionism. Season 3, Episode 6, Advanced Gay. Season 5, Episode 7, Bondage in Beta Male Sexuality. Season 1, Episode 12, Comparative Religion. Season 2, Episode 15, Early 21st Century Romanticism. Season 3, Episode 12, Contemporary Impressionists. Season 6, Episode 4, Queer Studies and Advanced Waxing. Season 2, Episode 4, Basic Rocket Science. Season 1, Episode 10, Environmental Science. Season 5, Episode 3, Basic Intergluteal Numismatics. Season 1, Episode 19, Beginner Pottery. Season 6, Episode 12, Wedding Videography. Season 3, Episode 19, Curriculum Unavailable. Season 5, Episode 10, Advanced Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. Season 1, Episode 7, Introduction to Statistics. Season 3, Episode 8, Documentary Filmmaking, Redux. Season 2, Episode 10, Mixology Certification. Season 2, Episode 19, Critical Film Studies. Season 2, Episode 21, Paradigms of Human Memory. Season 3, Episode 9, Foosball and Nocturnal Vigilantism. Season 6, Episode 11, Modern Espionage. Season 2, Episode 16, Intermediate Documentary Filmmaking. Season 3, Episode 21, The First Chang Dynasty. Season 1, Episode 21, Contemporary American Poultry. Season 3, Episode 17, Basic Lupine Urology. 
Season 5, Episode 4, Cooperative Polygraphy. Season 6, Episode 13, Emotional Consequences of Broadcast Television. Season 1, Episode 23, Modern Warfare. Season 2, Episode 6, Epidemiology. Season 2, Episode 8, Cooperative Calligraphy. Season 5, Episode 5, Geothermal Escapism. Season 3, Episode 5, Horror Fiction and Seven Spooky Steps. Season 3, Episode 10, Regional Holiday Music. Season 3, Episode 22, Introduction to Finality. Season 2, Episode 14, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Season 3, Episode 14, Pillows and Blankets. Season 2, Episode 23, A Fistful of Paintballs. Season 2, Episode 24, For a Few Paintballs More. Season 2, Episode 11, Abed's Uncontrollable Christmas. Season 3, Episode 3, Remedial Chaos Theory. Season 3, Episode 20, Digital Estate Planning.